tell me all about the DA40 in current generational terms. Sure. Yeah, so behind us we got the Diamond DA40 NG. I like to tell people about this as the holy trifecta in aviation. You got a new airframe designed by Diamond. You got new avionics, G1000 NXI, faster processors, brighter screens, and just a new evolution of the G1000. And of course, what we're talking about here is also the power plant, the Austro AE300. 168 horsepower engine originally designed from Mercedes. We brought it over into the aviation world and we absolutely love it. Does about 150 true airspeed, eight gallons an hour up at 10,000 feet. So super fuel efficient little aircraft. This is a flight training vehicle. Tell me what the experience is, what are its advantages, how can this airplane take over the world? So of all the flight schools we talked to, they've all wanted an aircraft that's easy to start, easy to run, you're not going to have students burning out the cylinders with Lena Peak, Richa Peak operations. And we felt like Diamond delivered on all those points and many more. So you got an engine that starts just with the turn of a key. Hot starts, cold starts, we don't even talk about it anymore because it's all the same. Turn on the ECU master, wait for the glow plugs to go off, turn the key. Engine operations, super simple, no longer dealing with mixture, prop, anything. So where mechanics are having a headache with all of that activity, you know, burning out cylinders, changing out cylinders prematurely through an annual, so on and so forth, is no longer. We also love on the 40NG as well as the entire Austro family, all the oil changes are done every 100 hours instead of 50. Top of all that, you know, the fuel burn when you're in a training organization, you know, I was talking about a max performance fuel burn at eight gallons an hour in a cruise setting, but realistically for flight training, you're much lower than that number. Mm -hmm. The stability of Jet A as you described, as well as the idea that most FBOs make their largest margin on Jet A, so if you're a field operator, you can come in and get a contract price on that that is much less than 100 low lead in almost every part of the country. And then lastly, you know, I love 100 low lead airplanes, I've flown them all my life, but there's always that concern of supply of that 100 low lead product. But, you know, I don't really have to worry about it because I fly a jet fuel airplane and I'm always going to have Jet A. Real world operational specs, when you're going from A to B to C to D and so forth, what is the airplane doing in terms of performance and operational? What do you experience? So I always flight plan for 150 true airspeed up at 10,000 feet. That's at a higher cruise power setting, usually north of 88%. The plane is rated for 92% max continuous operation on the engine, and at 92% you're just north of about 8 gallons an hour. You have 40 gallons of Jet A on board, so with that kind of fuel burn you're right around 4 to 5 hours worth of range, but you know, I like to be in a plane for about three hours and then I, I like to get out and take a break. So I'm running at anywhere between 84% and 92% for max continuous operation. And it's three hours, 150 knots. We can all do the math, about 450 nautical miles. You can do about 600 nautical miles if you're really, you know, stretching the legs of it and landing with about 30 to 45 minutes of fuel on board. If you pull the power back to like 60%, you know, that's where your economy comes in. You can stay up in the air for much longer. It's right around five gallons an hour at that point. I don't want to be in the air for eight hours. I don't know if you do. That's my typical operation. I'm usually taking these planes to customers and 84% is seven and a half gallons an hour. What's a suitably equipped DA40NG going to be going out the door for? So it really depends on the options. Uh, we say anywhere between five hundred dollars to $600,000. The biggest thing that people factor in is whether they have air conditioning or not. This one does have air conditioning, so it's in the mid to upper 500s. Mm -hmm. If it didn't have air conditioning, it'd be in the mid to lower 500s. And final question, since we are dealing with a power plant that is not of what we see usually around here, either brand C or brand L, mm -hmm. What's it take to maintain this airplane? Great question. Mm -hmm. To service this airplane, there's a little plug-in inside the cockpit where you basically plug a computer up to it. So in order for that mechanic to get trained on that, there's a, a course that Diamond offers to train you on the software and have the data cable plugged in mm -hmm. so you can understand what it is to maintain these engines more specifically. So you don't have your Continental and Lycoming you know, existing set of of uh, mechanics that are capable of doing it, but it doesn't take too much skill or knowledge to uh, you know, train them in order to make them uh, able to maintain these engines. Sam Linton from Lifestyle Aviation, we thank you so much for the quick verbal tour of the DA40NG, and we're really looking forward to trying it out for ourselves. Thank we're you looking much. Looking forward to flying with you. Thank you, sir. Right.
The future of USB charging power has arrived. Introducing new, ultra-fast charging TA360 USB chargers. Unlock the power of USB power delivery PD technology. Max power. Multiple configurations. In-seat cabin, cockpit, and galley USB power. Easy to install. Backed by the best. True Blue Power, the USB experts.